Let us discuss the concept of compound interest. People say compound interest is a lot difficult than simple interest. But if I have to be honest, compound interest is comparatively simple than simple interest because the variety of questions asked in compound interest are limited. For example, if the question is, principal is given as 1000 rupees, time is given as 10 years, rate of interest is given as 10% per annum. If I have to find out the simple interest for this question, and if I have to use the formula, even if I don't use the formula, I'll get the answer. But if I have to use the formula, I can go for PTR by 100. If I don't use the formula, I can say 10% every year. For 10 years, it is 100%. 100 percentage of 1000 rupees is equal to 1000 rupees. So my answer for simple interest is 1000 rupees. Suppose the same question is asked for compound interest. Then how shall we solve this? Now try to understand there is a formula for compound interest. Compound interest is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole power n minus p. Whole power n is nothing but number of years. You can also call it as whole power t. And if I substitute the values here, it is 1000 rupees, a very simple value. 1 plus 10 is the rate of interest by 100 whole power 10 years because n is number of years minus 1000. And if I keep calculating this, this will become 1000 into 110 by 100. 110 by 100 is nothing but it is 1.1 whole power 10 minus 1000. This is your answer. If you refer any books, the next step they will give you the answer. But try to understand the practical difficulty here. What is 1.1 to the power of 10? Forget about 1.1. Can anyone in the class tell me what is 11 to the power of 10? Without using pen and paper, without using calculator. I can confidently say 11 to the power of 10 is impossible. Even some calculators show error. 11 to the power of 10 looks simple, but 11 to the power of 10 is almost impossible, taking examinations into consideration. In examinations perspective, this is seriously impossible. We all know 11 square is 121, 11 cube some of us know it is 1331. We are not even comfortable with 11 power of 4. 11 power of 4 is 14641. But 11 power of 5, 11 power of 6, 11 power of 7 is seriously impossible. It's not like multiplication. It is power and power calculation is very, very difficult. That's the reason our teachers taught us squares and cubes. They never went beyond cubes. And in these kind of examinations, calculators are not allowed and it becomes impossible for us to calculate 11 power 5, 11 power 6, 11 power 7. What I really wanted to tell you here is the compound interest concept is such a concept where it is almost impossible to frame a question for 10 years. They will never ask you question beyond three years. If the question has to be asked, they will ask you for two years or three years. In some exceptional cases, maybe for four years, even if they ask you for four years, the number should be as simple as 10% or 20%. But anything other than that, they can't even ask you for four years. So the question paper is already leaked here. Because power of five is impossible, they will never ask you questions for five or six years. They will not even ask you for four years. So two and three years, if you are comfortable calculating compound interest, then I can say that you will be very, very comfortable answering many questions. The questions are different. The questions are complicated, but the questions can't go beyond this two and three years mark. So try to understand if you're comfortable with squares and cubes, it's very, very simple for us to answer questions on compound interest. So what we'll do now is we'll first get to understand everything where two years questions are given. Then we'll get into three years concept. So we'll complete the two years concept and then we'll move on to three years. Why I'm stretching so much on this is, suppose say in this question, if this was not 10%, if this was 12%, and this was not 10 years, if this was only five years, then this number would have become 12 and this number would have become five and this number would have become 1.12 whole power five. 1.12, forget about decimal, 112 square itself is difficult for us and is asking me 1.12 whole power 5. That's impossible. Even if the question was only for two years, using this formula, it becomes very, very difficult for me to answer because I get an equation 1.12 whole square and I have to subtract some number here. I have to multiply some other number here. So what I'm really trying to tell you here is compound interest formula looks okay for us it is difficult but if we by heart it maybe you can remember it but this formula will not even help you to solve five percent of the questions in the examination so forget about it we are doing aptitude we don't have to do mathematics here completely ignore this we'll understand the component as concept in detail first we'll get into two years concept then we'll move on to three years concept 
Before we get into questions, let us understand how do we calculate questions for two years in compound interest. Please pay your attention. We'll discuss two years concept first and then we'll get into the concept of three years. Suppose compound interest for two years. Principal remains 100%. For example, if I take the rate of interest as 10% per annum. If the rate of interest is 10% per annum, if I have to calculate compound interest for the first year, I'll be calculating 10% on 100. Because the first year, I'll be calculating it on the principal. For the first time when I calculate, I have no other choice except calculating it on the principal. So I'll be calculating 10% of 100, that is 10. That means the simple interest is equal to compound interest for the first time. But for the second year, if I have to calculate interest, I'll be calculating 10% on 100, that is 10. And I'll also calculate 10% of previous year's interest, that is 10% of 10, that is equal to 1. So for the second year, the interest is 10 plus 1. For example, if I have to go for 20 percentage per annum, I'll be calculating 20 percent on 100 for the first year, that is 20. For the second year, I'll start with 20 percent on 100, that is 20. But I will also calculate 20 percent on previous year's interest, that is 20 percent on 20, that is equal to 4. So the second year interest will be 20 plus 4. And if I have to go for 30 percent per annum, for the first year, I'll be calculating 30% of 100, that is 30. For the second year, I'll be calculating 30% of 100, that is 30. And 30% of 30. 10% of 30 is 3, then 30% of 30 will be 9. So it becomes 30 plus 9. And if I have to go for 13% per annum, pay your attention please. I will start with 13 percentage of 100, 13. And I will again for the second year, I'll be calculating 13 percentage of 100, that is 13. And I'll also calculate 13 percent of 13. 13 percent of 13 will give you 1.69. That means whenever you have to calculate 13 percentage of 13, it is nothing but it is 13 percent of 13. That is 13 into 13 by 100. 13 square is 169. 169 by 100 will give you 1.69 percentage. So what you have to really understand here is whenever you are going for the second year calculation, second year you will be having 10, whatever you have it for first year, that interest will always be paid. So 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 13, 13, that's okay. But the extra interest, what you are paying is generated on previous year's interest. So 10 plus 10% 10 of 10, 20 plus 20% 20 of 20, 30 plus 30 percent of 30, 13 plus 13 percent of 13. But this is something we have done it before. Whenever you have to calculate two years compound interest, for 10 percent it will be 10 plus 10 plus 1 square. For 20 percentage it will be 20 plus 20 plus 2 square. For 30 percentage it will be 30 plus 30 plus 3 square. For 13 percentage it will be 13 plus 13 plus 1 point three squares. So remember, whenever you have a two digit number where there is no zero in the unit place, you'll put a decimal here. Even here, if you have put a decimal here, that becomes one square, two square, three square, 1.3 square. So it's very easy for us to calculate the overall compound interest for two years. Like say, if someone asks you, what is the total compound interest for two years if the rate of interest is 7% per annum? If the rate of interest is 7% per annum, then overall compound interest will be equal to 7 plus 7 plus 0 0.7 square. That is equal to 7 plus 7 plus 0 0.49, that is 14.49 percentage. So what I'm really trying to tell you here is, whenever you know the rate of interest percentage, for two years, whenever you have to calculate, it is two times the number and one time the square of the number by 10. Like say, what is the overall compound interest for two years at 15% per annum? The overall compound interest percentage is 15 plus 15 plus 1.5 square. 15 plus 15 is very easy. 1.5 square is 15 square 225, but you will put a decimal before two numbers. So it is 2.25. If you have decimal after one number, the square will have a decimal after two numbers. That is something you all have to remember. Now tell me, what is the overall compound interest at the rate of 9% per annum for two years? At the rate of 9% per annum for two years, it is 9 plus 9 plus 0 0.9 square. That is 9 plus 9 plus 0 0.81. So whenever there are questions on two years, the only thing you have to remember here is the overall interest is two times the number and one time the square by 10. Why do we use this and where do we use this? We use it in a lot of questions and we get our answer so easily without using p into 1 plus r by 100 whole power n minus p. 
So let us try doing some questions in the further videos. Thank you so much. I am Krishna Jaitanya Reddy. Bye.